Hello everybody, I would like to welcome you to the fifth episode of the Future Lab's 25th anniversary series. My name is Marianne Eisel, I am a key researcher and artist at the Aus Electronica Future Lab and today it's about a very wide-ranging topic called computation and beyond. Within this episode we will describe different approaches to transform knowledge or scientific matters into tangible links that find a way straight into our hearts and minds. Such shortcuts to hard-to-grasp topics are pressingly needed to inspire and encourage the public to get active and with that to jointly guide our future. To define a ready-to-use course of action to make this transformation happen is quite difficult and not every good tangible link comes from a well-thought-through concept followed by a strictly executed design process. In fact, fails, creative methods to overcome difficulties and a certain degree of serendipity often led to the most inspiring works. In the following minutes, Matthew Gardiner and I are introducing different examples where we think that we have accomplished to hit this point. One thing is clear, it takes much more than a machine can compute. The first approach to create such tangible ink is quite a straightforward one. It's about reducing the complexity of knowledge into handy bits that build on the social reality of a broader range of audience. This gesture-controlled ball maze is a very good example for that kind of tangible link, since most of us remember a maze from our own childhood. It's an easy accessible object that, after putting in the right context, connects you to questions gesture researchers are exploring every day. The maze is controlled by tilting the hand sideways or back and forth. In this case, the interaction method should be perceived as very natural, since the flat of your hand represents the moving top of the maze. But is this way of controlling the maze really intuitive? And what are natural gestures to control different kind of interfaces? This and other questions suddenly arise while interacting with the maze. So let's try if this flat hand gesture enables me to navigate the ball along the track. This ball maze was part of a whole exhibition about gestures we have developed in 2017 together with the linguistics and semiotics of the Technical University in Chemnitz. The focus of the Future Lab within this exhibition was to find ways to communicate the often very dry subject matters of linguistics in a way that inspires the public to dive a little bit deeper into the gesture world. Another installation within this exhibition was a special mirror that visualizes your very own gesture space directly in front of you. And with that shifts the classification of gestures by space right into an interactive experience. Furthermore, not only interaction on its own helps to reach the public. Another crucial part is to use the interaction as an input that finds an echo in the one or other way. This involvement enables the public to become part of the contents itself. With the help of this approach of participation, we have the opportunity that contents produces a much longer lasting impression. Within the gesture exhibition, we applied this approach by an installation called Shadow Gestures. Shadow gestures replace captured body movements and makes them visible for upcoming visitors. This installation is an adaption of a well-known tool we have developed here in the Future Lab in 2010 called Shadowgram. It captures your body and visualizes it as a shadow silhouette. The representation of yourself as a shadow has one big benefit. If you know the person, you could easily recognize their shadow silhouette. But if not, you will only identify gender and age at most. So with the help of this adapted version of the Shadowgram, the captured body movements are getting transformed into public contributions to the gesture exhibition. But the person who stands behind that contribution still stays relatively anonymous. 
This unique way of participation results in more unconstrained statements and is a perfect tool within the gesture exhibition to increase the variety of shared body gestures. Such tangible representations of knowledge are not only working in the context of exhibitions, they also reveal their beauty if used in a more artistic way. G'day, I'm Dr. Matthew Gardner, artist, researcher and oroboticist at the Ars Electronica Future Lab. But I started working with my field a long time before I came here. Since I was about eight years old, I've been learning how to fold paper, but I also learned at the same time how to program. Since then, I've been fascinated by the movement of folds and also about how to program those with code. And like many art forms, origami, the Japanese term for paper folding, is currently experiencing a worldwide unprecedented growth as an art form, as a science, and also as a technology. Our work at the Future Lab explores this unique intersection of fields through art science research in origami and robotics, or as I call it, oribotics. Paper is actually a programming material. If you know how to do origami, you can program a very complex pattern into a sheet of paper where every fold creates a permanent memory in the paper. In this way, a folding pattern is a geometric material program. With origami ideas and patterns, we can take a flat 2D sheet of paper and transform it into a moving 3D geometry. My artworks from the last 20 years are based around such transformations, where folding patterns become kinetic sculpture. The robotic patterns move the origami pattern. Take for example this work here, designed at the, uh, the Future Lab in 2010. These oribots are still alive and travelling the world to fold and unfold for audiences. The robotic skeleton is designed to follow the movements of the origami. As an artist, I'm inspired and excited by simplicity. Especially the kind of simplicity that leads to complex relations. Origami has many simple rules. So does robotics, so does mechanics, and so does engineering. When you connect many simple ideas together, they form something complex. This one simple axis of motion results in the movement of some 1,050 folds in this special origami pattern. So I developed this folding pattern based on this folding pattern which is the water bomb pattern. I was inspired by a presentation at an origami science, maths and engineering conference at Caltech University. The presentation was by Zhong Yu about work with his collaborator, Kaori Kuribayashi. They explained how this pattern might be used to heal hearts, damaged heart stents. And so this was designed as a stent, so it could be shrunk to put small into the artery and then later expanded to become a stable structure. My design was further influenced by biomimetic studies by Birita Kresling. She's an important researcher in this field. Kresling's research highlights the many connections between origami and nature. And in particular, she explains how leaves and natural things fold and unfold. During my artistic residency, inspiration came from discussions about the work with lab members. The relationship between the audience and the work was critical to understand. Then a realization hit me that a single lorry bot causes so many folding reactions that it made me think about the whole exhibition as a network of interconnected oribots. Lights and animation of the oribots brought about by small interactions with one oribot transferred data across the network in a rippling, evocative pattern of water and folds. Oribotics comes from a very pure vision that started in 2003 when I coined the term oribotics. And this vision is about finding a way towards more and more organic robotics. Professor Robert Nelson in a catalogue essay called this idea origanic. It's about the organic nature of origami. Nelson saw my works in a continuum from small scale, simple exhibitions to long term, complex research problems. 
that myself and co-researchers in the Future Lab research in our FWF-funded work. This field of research, or as we call it in the lab, ORI, comes from this pure sense of folding. The field has dense interconnections between computer science, mathematics, algorithms, robotics, and for me at the foremost, art. Deceptively simple questions such as what is a fold led to in-depth research. We've discovered and created connections between folding, scale, materials, and dimensionality. This work is ambitiously titled The Folded Geometry of the Universe. It was created during such research-based exploration of computational forms and the development of a method we call fold mapping. This nautilus shape mapped with folding pattern is a static moment, like the present, of my universe. It's folded to contain various universal metaphors. I imagine it as as infinite, going infinitely smaller and infinitely larger. Interestingly, folds function at all scales of nature. At the nanoscopic DNA level, proteins fold and unfold to create life. But folds also occur at the universal scale. Researcher Mark Nehring hypothesized that the dark matter web, currently invisible to us, has patterns formed by gravity wells that Mark explains by relationships in folded origami tessellation patterns. My universe is an artistic work and is inspired by and intended to reference these works of science, not to replicate them. This translation, this alchemical transformation of knowledge is central to the practice of the Future Lab. Ideas from interconnecting fields converge with the concepts in our robotics. As researchers and artists, we spend years of work and dedication aiming to find ways for audiences of all ages to understand these new frontiers of knowledge. To me as a researcher, nature is a folded system. But to me as an artist, it is a metaphor that carries universal weight. Okay, that's all for me. Over to you, Mariana. I'm going to try and fold space to get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew, for this great input. It's a pleasure to do this episode together with you. The creation of tangible links is not only limited to certain places like exhibitions, museums or even shells. In the case of our next featured project, which was jointly developed with the Natural History Museum in Vienna, it comes in the shape of a bicycle. This special designed cargo bike unfolds into a mobile shadowgram and puts the concept into a new context. The aim of this mobile version is to increase the public awareness for light pollution issues by bringing these contents to a broader range of social classes and not only to the ones that can be seen inside of museums. To use the shadowgram in such a mobile setting, the constraints of the installation needed a little shift. Components had to be made up of lightweight materials and had to be built in a way to fit the storage space of the bicycle. Also the software got an update. Not only the body silhouettes are captured within this installation. Also shadow-like birds and butterflies appeared right next to your very own silhouette. The story behind that additional layer is to visually get in touch with animals that are affected by light pollution and to give the public the opportunity to connect with them. This mobile installation is part of a long-time collaboration with the Natural History Museum that focuses on the design and development of new ways of involving the public into their internal research processes. The biggest milestone during this collaboration and also one of our recent contributions to tangible links within exhibitions 
was last year the implementation of a concept room dedicated to science communication and the involvement of the public, called DEC50. We have now the opportunity to catch a first glimpse of DEC50, which is located in the second floor of the Natural History Museum. The room is divided into three areas, a laboratory, a stage and a social area. Each area focuses on different aspects of the research activities at the museum and try to find new forms of communication to make these activities tangible. To not spoil your anticipation to your next trip to Vienna too much, I will stop at this point and let your imagination allow full bend. Thank you for listening and stay safe and curious. Hello, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm Peter Holzkorn and I'll present the next one, which is titled Swarms and Bots. We will take a look at how the future lab pioneered swarm art and technology in the last 10 years. You may know that we performed drone light shows around the world with the Spexels, space pixels, but since then we have taken this vision to other forms, such as bot swarms carrying video displays or interactive light painting with drones. So we'll be looking at all of that, and of course I'll talk about how we made it all work, and what ideas we have for swarms in the future. So, see you soon.